Today we're at Omaha Beach, more specifically the dog green sector of Omaha Beach, a place that you hear an awful lot about when you talk about the D-Day landings here at Omaha. It's the area that was featured in the opening scene of Saving Private Ryan. Now today we're here to tell a slightly different story, and that is the story of a German soldier by the name of Karl Wegner. Karl was a German machine gunner posted here on the morning of the 6th of June 1944, overseeing these beaches as the Allied troops landed here. We're going to share his story today. So I'm currently stood by Widerstand Nest 72, WN 72. That is this structure up here behind me. It's one of the numerous defensive positions that the Germans had um, positioned along the beach coastline here at Normandy. Now, Widerstand Nest 72 was a bit more substantial than this at the time. Um, there was some barbed wire across the road and stuff like that. We're gonna go look at that in a minute. Um, but on the morning of the 6th of June, 1944, there was a young German soldier called Karl, Karl Wegener, who was posted here. Karl Wegner was 19 years old on the morning of D-Day. He was a young, uh, inexperienced and newly recruited German soldier. It was about 5.30 in the morning when he was asleep here, when he was awoken urgently by his colleague. He's recorded a recount of what he remembers from that morning. Violently, my arm was shaken by Willi. I looked straight up and saw him. His face was pale. I asked him what was wrong and he just pointed out to sea. Carl couldn't believe what he saw. Thousands of Allied ships out here on the coastline behind me. And it was hard to imagine, right? You imagine the fear and you think of the fear and it's depicted in, in, in things like Saving Private Ryan of the troops who were landing here. But imagine being a 19 year old, young, newly recruited soldier, looking out at, at that, the overwhelming odds, surely knowing that the, 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 the odds were against them and they likely or maybe wouldn't survive the day. Um, it must have been a, uh, a terrifying feeling looking out there and seeing, seeing that coming towards the coastline here at Omaha Beach. So this is Widerstand Nest 72, WN 72, where Karl Wegner was based. Now, this is the main bunker that remains. Um, WN 72 at the time would have been bigger. Um, there were some trench lines and stuff that ran through behind and across here. There was a big old um, kind of roadblock that sat in the road over here. So uh, lots of barbed wire. There was a bit more to it at the time. We don't know exactly where Carl would have been with, uh, manned with his machine gun, his MG42. Um, it's actually probably unlikely that he would have been directly in this part because this uh, is the gun position and you can see the gun still in there now so it's unlikely that he would have been actually based in here um, in that main kind of bunker because that was for the big gun but probably in another point along here or in one of the trench lines is where Carl Wegner would have been based with his machine gun. Within minutes, the Allies opened up with their opening bombardment here. So the naval ships bombarded this whole area heavily to precede the invasion from the infantry. Carl had never seen combat before, so that was terrifying. And although he wasn't injured, when that bombardment ceased, he was shaken. Uh, he managed to get back up, um, got ready to man his MG42 and looked out here to see what was gonna happen next. I tucked the butt of my MG into my shoulder and looked down the sight, but for some reason I couldn't watch what was happening. I closed my eyes and waited for the order to fire. At around 6.30 a.m. the first landing craft hit the beach out here and the moment that Carl had been dreading was upon him. Fire, Wegner, fire, Lang yelled at me. I was frozen. I saw all these men in olive brown uniforms splashing through the water towards the sand. They looked so unprotected in the wide open space of the beach. 
Lang took the butt of his pistol and crashed it down on the top of my helmet. The metallic clang brought me to life and I pulled the trigger up tight. The MG roared, sending hot lead into the men running along the beach. I saw some go down. I knew I'd hit them. This 19-year-old lad from Hanover had just cut down several men. My mind rationalised it. This was war. Even so, it left a sour taste in my mouth. Now was not the time to think of right or wrong, only of survival. Now, Omaha Beach, and in particular this section of where we are in front of us here, the Dog Green sector, was one of the bloodiest sections of the invasion beaches. Uh, and that wasn't lost on Carl. We could see smoke bellowing from some of our strong points, while others had fallen silent. We had no way to contact those still resisted or to get further orders since our phone was out. We felt quite alone. We kept up our fire at the Amis on the beach, but only to keep them away from us. I only fired when I saw them coming towards us. I did not shoot at anyone who was not moving. My thought was simple. Do not shoot at me and I won't shoot at you. And no need to shoot at dead or wounded men. We were three scared kids in a bunker in the middle of one of the biggest battles in history. As the morning developed here, the situation was becoming dire. More and more troops were, were landing on the beach um, and it was obvious that the Allies were going to have a successful invasion here. Carl's commanding officer had been killed um, and even though he was inexperienced, only 19 years old, that technically meant that he was in charge. Uh, so he decided that him and the remaining two uh, soldiers with him would have no choice but to retreat from their position. They were really low on ammo. Uh, they had about 50 rounds left between them and they had two grenades so they decided that they would have to try to make a run for it uh, through the trench line off away from the bunker uh, to try to get away um, up the uh, the hill here behind them to to make a retreat I took a deep breath and nodded to them both grenades flew out at the same time explosions followed I sprang through the doorway fearing the worst I tensed up as I emerged into the open So I've just come down onto the beach here and up here behind us you can see uh, Widerstand Nest 72, WN 72. Um, that wasn't the only defensive position here, um, there were other uh, machine gun points up here and there's another one further back there, that was uh, WN 73. Um, but 72 um, around that area there is where Carl was based. So despite their position being overrun, Carl did manage to retreat back uh, through the trench line and up the, the bluff here um, and, and away from the coastline. Um, the war didn't end there for Carl though. Carl made his way back up, um, retreating here and on his way he ran into other German soldiers um, who also had had to pull back here from the coast. Uh, eventually they ran into a more senior commanding officer and they were reassigned to other units. Um, and they would continue to, to fight their way um, backwards as the Allies pushed them away here um, for several weeks. Um, and it wasn't until mid-July that Carl's war actually came to an end uh, when he was captured by the American troops. Now in Carl Wegner's memoirs, he noted that although he had been taken prisoner, he felt free for the first time in his life. So look, whilst this is um, normally a story that's told from the Allied landings point of view, I thought it would be interesting to share the story um, of a young German machine gunner who was here, who, who you know, look, participated in some awful things and uh, an awful lot of, of, of killing and wounding happened here on this beach where I'm walking right now. But, you know, I think when, when you consider a, a young 19-year-old soldier who, who maybe has been uh, put into a position here where he had to fight for his life and he had to defend. It's hard to uh, it's hard to imagine the mindset there. Um, you know, to be able to see the, what's happening in front of you. But uh, I guess it was war. What what choice did he have but to try to to, to defend uh, himself and his his comrades here? Look, I hope you found it interesting. Um, I certainly found it an interesting story researching Carl and, and reading his memoirs. Um, I'll put a link in the description below to those memoirs if you want to have a look and see them for yourself. 
Guys, thank you very much for watching from here at Omaha Beach.